All right. So last one of the season. Maybe we'll do Metalworks and rehash on it because I missed that week because my computer died. But yeah, I'm going to do Snake Water. Last map of the season. And this is probably my, my one of my least favorite maps that are like pretty popular because it's so it's so boring on where I feel. But hey. Uh, hey, uh, teach their own, but rollout on this map's pretty general. There's like three places you really go. Basically two, but there are te technically three, but usually it's going to start out with like this. Make sure you get a buff on this map. So either from here you split off, you either go through Salt and go Catwalker Main Door, or you go lower. You can try and do that and take no fall damage. It doesn't really matter that much. A thing I usually did when I used to go Kitchen, I don't usually do cheese mints like this anymore, but what you can do is sneak all the way here and jump here instead of going all the way over here and jumping across where they can spot you. It's just like a little thing where you get you know, a bit of a jump and maybe you can either hide here or get high ground, be here, and then just wait till there's a distraction. Then you can commit on a point, stuff like that. And usually from here, either it's a counter mid where it's like, okay, every mid, they are going my kitchen and it's working. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a scout like right there and then you in here. So if someone comes in here, you get a 2v1, you get a pick instantly and that mid is shut down. So on the other end, if you're going their kitchen every mid, don't because eventually if a team's good enough, they're going to counter it. And it, so you don't want to be too predictable. You want to find other ways to have success on mids because in like a second half of the game, they're going to adapt. But that's usually how I want to play it either. And if it's a really slow mid, if you can get someone to call you, if there's no scout on the shed, you can get a really good bomb over into their saw or land on their demo and try and knock them into your team. A lot of stuff like that. That's usually your own kitchen mid, other mids. Most of the time, how it works is your pocket goes and sits on stairs. And their main job is going to be... I, I don't know. I've seen people get here, but you take a lot of spam just because this slope isn't very friendly to spam because the soldiers can just shoot it because it slopes up and you can have a really good angle on it. But usually I played here as pocket. So you deny the side saw or and you're still in a decent position to bomb. You can like do something like that. Yeah. But you're in a good spot to deny saw. If there's soldiers just bombing here, you just get a free pick. And if they commit and you don't want to, then you can just counter jump them or shoot them while they're on your med. Or, you know, counter jump point if they're pushing across. Stuff like that. But usually what I do on mid is go catwalk. Spam wherever you want. You know, try and get early damage. Depends on what you like to do. I don't usually like spamming. So I think I could have more impact by jumping in. Because that's that's just what I do. I did as Roamer. Uh, maybe one day I'll watch all demos. But usually how I played is... Um, so what you do is I just try to take no damage at the beginning. Um, wait until everyone's healed, come down here with crit heals, get a buff, and then if I want, either you can bomb top left, try and get onto someone's there, someone on top point, someone on here, isolate a pick with your scout, you can go here and high bomb, you can, I know I saw, I think it was Soapy doing this, where he jumped off this part, which I actually haven't seen very often, but, um, the thing is you can't get interrupted, but you don't, you probably don't get as high and far as if you go here, but the problem is the scout can actually deny you. But, you know, you do you. If you want to commit, do that. This is a map you really need to call your bomb. Like, be like, can't jump bomb, jumping in three. So your other soldiers can react and your team can react. They're probably going to push one of these lanes most of the time. Or they're going to push middle and one of the side lanes. And you want to decide, once you're here... I can't, I don't have a no clip button, but once you're there, you want to decide, do I want to bomb behind? Do I want to bomb on people on top right? Do I want to bomb someone here on the shed? Do I want to jump into the med? Do I want to jump into the demo? And a lot of times it's just how your team's going to play it. Because if your team's not really going to commit, a lot of the times what you can do is land on the players all the way isolated on the right. Because most time, please play, teams play in this vicinity. And if their heels are far away, so if you land on a soldier here and maybe land and saw behind, you're going to pull the scout or soldier to look back while your other scout and soldier commit. Get those two picks. And you're behind where you can just be here, be annoying, be in a really good spot. If anything, you can jump away, get out to low, and just play the packs and just be super annoying. And then if they leave, potentially get a collapse here. Is the Soapy kind of weird to hit? Um, The thing is you are sacrificing height for... Like, you're sacrificing height to just never be denied. I miss my C-tap over and over again. I am bad. 
you're not close game. But like, yeah, look, you can get super high if you hit like a good C-tap. It's just you're going to be a lot more floaty unless you sat. I don't know. I like the other one. I just never tried this one, but you can get super far with this one as well. So, a couple bombs you can do if you want to do... Because I remember this was, I think, the only thing Marmaduke did when he played. It's like, this was like the main thing is he just... I messed up the pogo, actually, but... Forgive me, I haven't played this game that much. So, you know, you pogo and you just get in their song. It's super annoying. Uh, nowadays, it kind of gets countered, but... Yeah, it's it's like a really quick aggro mid that kind of catches people off guard. The problem is that if you get too predictable, you're just going to get picked really early. But if you want to jump and saw, if you ever land here before you can saw, you're dead. And over time, you just want to make sure your bomb, if you ever commit into their saw, is you are in the saw door. Like, you want to be here. Because if you're anywhere before, you're going to get juggled by the soldier before you get in the door and killed. And just get tunneled. A lot of the times you see a roamer turn back and try and get a 1v1 here where kind of either have to take it or you just go farther behind or you commit back in it's kind of like i'm not going to go into that because that's kind of like how you play and how you see the situation it's kind of depends on what's happening and it's experience based and you know i don't want to spoil the whole journey of you know getting better as rumor <laughs> so but those are like the main bombs you do another mid i don't i don't know i don't like the cheese mids as much but you can do this we're this is kind of like an ISO thing. Watch basketball, you know, ISO. But you just pay, put yourself in usually a 1v1 position a lot of times. There was someone, I'm not going to say their name because they are redacted now, but every mid they did was other team's kitchen, and you rush it. I messed up the jump, but you rush it super fast. You get in their saw as fast as humanly possible, and you get the quickest pinch ever. And a lot of times, if people aren't ready, you catch them out entirely. Because, like, when you go kitchen, you're usually... Yeah, that guy. <laughs> You're usually uh, caught off guard because you don't expect people to be there. Is the Shadowburn roll ever used? People are. I don't know. I, I Some people do it. It's more viable with the market guard now. But, but the problem is you get there with like two rockets and not a buff. And most of the time when the demo has full HP, I don't really want to fast roll out. Unless it's like certain maps. But like the demo is full HP on this map. And their team's going to get there very quick. So... I don't know the exact thing, but I know it ends with, like, fuck. I know it ends with, this. I missed it, but you, you slope off this, and you land like here. And their demo's gonna be either here or there. And you have to two rocket him, or you have to mark guard him to get the pick, otherwise you're dead. And it gets you a bit of pressure, but the map isn't small enough where your team really can do something off it. So I don't really like it. You can do it if you want. You'd have to look it up, because I don't know if it's out of my head, because I never do it. <laughs> So, you do you. If you like it, do it. If you don't, don't. Just find out what you like to do on this mid. Don't stick to one thing. The thing that really can't be countered is a high bomb. Because it can be countered if all you're doing is just committing. But you can also, like, strafe off, shoot a guy there, leave, get a path, get re arrowed, get all that stuff done. But that's most of the mids. So, I think I know, remember how I do this. <laughs> so, uh... So the other thing you can do is, actually, I'm gonna, I'm, that's mid's over. Mid's over. If I think of something else during this, I'll say it. But let's say, for example, you're holding mid against Uber Disad. So they're pushing mid with Uber Ad. A lot of the times you're going to want one soldier, one scout here or a soldier here where they spot this. Usually a flank scout can do it pretty well. But a lot of times you want your flank scout near your roamer so you can push behind for a back cap. Either works. A soldier being here gets a good of, bit of spam early on the door. And usually I play here because the thing you get here is you get a good spam angle, you get a really safe thing, and you get a spot if they're coming catwalk or not. And then you instantly can rotate to where you're usually at, where you just spam the catwalk door, and if they come main saw, you spam it. Stuff like that. So if they come saw, you just always want vision. On roamer, you always want vision. Either someone needs vision, either your flank scout or you need vision. And if your flank scout's getting it, you're getting a buff. Stuff like that. But I usually like to sacrifice a buff for more vision so I can just give the info to team and I can get some more help with stuff happen. But yeah, so that's usually how you're going to handle this stuff is a lot of times Roamer's going to be watching catwalk and you're probably going to have a scout, a soldier, someone looking at lower just to spot the cross. In a mix up people do, it was the Corsa originally, rest in peace. I mean, not rest in peace, but you know, onto greener pastures. Um, 
what he does is you go kitchen, you bait it, you instantly turn back and go lower when everyone rotates. It, it worked a lot better a lot back in the day when people wouldn't expect it, because you're like, oh, they're going kitchen. All right, let's over-rotate to lower, or the kitchen door, and just spam it so we get a force. I never noticed that spins. That's crazy. Okay. This has a point. But the whole thing is you bait them there, and then you walk to the lower later. So a lot of times you don't bite it, because it doesn't take that much to get a kitchen force. If anything, it takes, like, a demo or one soldier. But it's a good mix-up just to get some people off that door. If anything, you can super mix it up. <laughs> go lower, go go kitchen, go back lower, go back kitchen. But it's kind of pointless. Um, I don't think I have any commands that are useful. But yeah, so most times just don't bite on it if you're the roamer. If someone's here, if you're here, don't rotate. The other guy can rotate. You don't. Because they're not going to go saw door. That guy can rotate there to kitchen to cover it. You stay here. Make sure you get spam on the door and cover that. And there's a couple things you can do. Either you commit for the force, you commit for the back cap, where if they go lower, you commit through saw, make space for your scout, draw eyes, hit a good rocket on one or two players, and then your scout should clean it up. That's at least when I've played with Slemnish, Yite, great scouts like that, where if I do 100 to both people, they're going to win the 2v1 every time. So, yeah. Thanks for the sub alpha. But, uh, yeah, like I said, you can either commit for the 2v1 either door. If they go saw, you can drop down to lower. It's a bit worse purely because it's easier to drop down from window to jump into window, and only one class can really do that quickly. Scout can, but it's a little bit slower because you got to jump up on all this stuff. But uh, a lot of the times you can push the flank really, really well on these maps, and getting a back cap and getting people behind is so obnoxious. And if you can get a force and a back cap going, you're in such a good spot. So stuff like that's really good. So try it if you want. Try it if you don't. And the main goal on forces is to have minimum, hopefully one person die. Maximum two. If you get three people dead, you screwed up. Like, if you get three people dead, you kind of, you're kind of losing the next point, or at least you're not in a good position for next point. And the team can try and either get a force or get the point. Sup, Soapy, and I think that's most of holding mid against Uberad. Um, it's Uber disad. So, yeah. So one thing I saw in a match earlier was <laughs> in the match uh, Froyo versus Corsia is it didn't happen that much. I think it was out of context where I remember Dolphin or was it Jared said that they got caught too many times here is but I think it was two outliers. The first time I think it was a miscommunication where one soldier was looking at window and the other was like like over there. One guy was here, one was over there. So you have no info and they just got rushed. The other time Trip went for a sack and Yite went to help. But a scout went through window, and he got caught, and they got two picks. But generally, how stalemates work on this map, this is why I hate this map, by the way, is it's so, a lot of times it's either you pressure saw, you sack through saw, you pressure lower, you sack through saw, you pressure lower, you sack through lower, or you pressure lower, and you try and get on a point and get a good trade, and stuff like that. But, so, most of the time, this is your home as roamer. I like playing here mainly just because all the vision in the world and if you see someone push and you have no one with you, leave. <laughs> Just like leave and spam. Let your team know. Try and get a call if they're coming window, if they're coming catwalk. And if anything, rotate here. And just get spam on this door. And they can't get through here. If they get through main saw, your team who's in lower is not going to be in a big worry position. And if they come window, your scout should be able to deal with it. Stuff like that. But if you're sacking through saw, it's kind of like a timing thing. Because if they spot you, it's not great. But a lot of times the sack is like this, and you want to try and get on the med. Delay your rocket. I forgot that's the aim one. Um, both these maps are kind of boring, remember, just because there's not much to do. But, yeah. So, yeah, you high bomb in, try and get on the med, try and get in the demo, whatever, whatever. You can always two-man, you can always bomb into cheese, try and get a pick here. If a soldier plays in here, and you get a 1v1 where you probably have better health. But most of the time, they're going to get help from another soldier. But, you know, there's things you can do. This is usually the bomb. Other things you can do if you want. And if their med's close, you, know, you pogo in. That was a speed shot. But you pogo in, try and get on players, and maybe you two-man. Two-manning on this map's not the worst. It's better than some others, but it's not... I don't think it's the best map. And two-manning in a second is always kind of a little bit more risky than one-manning. So, you know, it depends on how you guys like to play. And how confident you are in your combo to hold down the fort. So that's one. The window sack, it's pretty predictable. But if you can get a good bomb through and the scout doesn't deny you too hard, you should be fine. 
And a lot of it is pressuring lower. And I think the big thing about pressuring lower for a sack through saw or a sack through window is you need to actually, like a lot of teams don't really think about it. When I Like teams I've played with, they don't think about like actually making the lower threat a thing because playing roamer and like having your team like, oh, I'll pressure lower. It's like them just standing around waiting for your roamer to one man. So it's really, the scout just waits and it gets really, it's a lot harder to make something happen than if you're, at least like once a game, your team actually does stuff off of pushing lower where you actually dry and you commit. So maybe they're stacking saw because they don't believe it. So what you do is you just walk all the way to point, get a soldier on the high ground, and just spam, get cap time, bait a trade, and maybe sack two people on the combo for a force and hope your combo gets out. Stuff like that. And like keep keep mixing it up, keep the other team on their toes. I don't think enough teams do that nearly as often as they could or should. Another bomb you can do through saw is like that. You can do it definitely a bunch bet a lot better, but it's not great. You don't get much height. It's kind of like a speed thing and you hope their meds on point. That's most of the sacks you do. I guess like one you could do is like through lower off this wall. But it's basically high bomb off wall, try and get on med or value pick or get behind. And a big thing you can do is I've seen is if you're trying to like, if your team's trying to do the dry pressure, land here because it's so annoying to deal with. Because the only thing that I can deal with you is A, a scout runs up here, or a soldier bombs you where you can just counter jump and either get out or recommit onto a player. And what you did is you pulled one or two people back and then you aggressed. So instead of just aggressing immediately, you're distracting and then you're doing something, which is pretty good. But those are the main things you do to break the second stalemate. Uh, main thing is uh, if you're going saw, be aware. You're gonna get pushed. Play your life. Get info. Let your team know what's up. Big thing. Big thing on this map. So that's that. Okay, let's say pushing second with... Do I have any demos of my Roma matches? Yeah, but... I don't know. When the semester's over, maybe I'll watch some. Because I was... I was planning on maybe watching one from each season that I have. And just seeing you know, the evolution. That'd be fun, right? Gib... I've wait, I've too many. You have to ask for a certain one. And I don't think I have them labeled, so it'd be rough. But um yeah. So let me think. Where was I going? So if you have Uber ad, there's two places you're gonna I guess three. Lower, window, saw. So a lot of the times lower is a transition Uber where maybe you have more to actually saw's more of a transition Uber lowers more of one where they have people set up and you don't want to get soldier bombed as easily. So a lot of the times it's going to be... It's going to be like... So they don't have as many soldiers, so we're going to go through a quicker door that has less distance between us and them. And usually the only worry is a, a soldier pre-fire bombing, a sniper in cheese, which usually you're going to bomb a soldier here anyways just to get info. And a really easy way to force the other team out a second is jump your combo here and either you commit or you just back out and they're going to have to respect it to either going into second or leaving entirely. And either you're going to catch them out with Uber by dropping off and committing cross bridge or committing cross point or you're going to commit through there and yeah, stuff like that. But it's a good mix up. Another good mix up. I love mix ups. Uh, I don't like pocket if I did. And if I could use Banner, maybe I'd do this a lot more, but Banner's kind of unviable because Soldier's kind of not a heal class. It's not as viable. Gunboats are better, I think, debatably, or arguably. But yeah, this is a place you can go. Stuff like that. The thing with Shutter on Villa is way better than that because they are super stuck. Because... <laughs> I think going through the shutter is qu getting to the and getting to the last is quicker than them going from top right to getting to the last. So it's really good. But yeah, like I said, another one is window. So it's the same thing with the cheese or the the kitchen idea. You peek saw, and then they kind of rotate there, and then you immediately drop out window, and you kite out all the way over here. So you try and get as much ground where they can't really contest you while people are kind of rotating towards this side, cheese jumping on pipe, stuff like that. And your team kind of goes there. But I'm kind of going over to the combo stuff. But so wherever your team goes, you usually want to go the opposite. Maybe if they're, your, your team's going saw, you can go window instead. Because lower, you don't really want to be there. Only worries a soldier jumping on your head. But here you get a lot of info. You get a lot of spam that your team can't see. Like, oh, their combo's on bats. They have a sniper. They have demo forward. 
do whatever. And you can also always have a scout down there. And then if they go there, you drop down, you help out. And you're always on high ground where you can get a decent bomb instead of going through lower. Where you just like, land on pipe or something. Land on them. Something like that. Pretty good place to be is usually soft for soldier. Just goes high ground. And yeah. But if your team goes lower, it's the same thing. Um, teams may potentially push your flank to try and get a good place to go. Once again, you can either go there or you can go towards the top. The problem with the top is there's just like... If you're playing here, it's a lot longer of a journey to get there than to just instantly jump out of saw. But you're kind of forfeiting the, the quick flank routes. But you give info. If you live and give info, that's good enough. If you ask any combo person, I think they're fine with you living and giving info. Usually how that works, if your team goes lower, once again, if they're overcommitting to saw, spend a lot more. You can also peek here, try and pressure cheese. You don't have to commit, and if they don't see you, you can. And then you can get on people on this cutoff where if your team's slowly pushing and they're still playing bats and you can get here, that's basically a wipe. And they're going to have to drop down lower unless they deal with you instantly. But yeah. But a lot of times there's going to be a soldier on the pipe or a soldier in shoes, so it's not going to be happening that often. Yeah, but that's mainly how you push in a second. God, my throat hurts. Um, <laughs> I've been talking for like three hours, two hours. But, yeah, so holding second against Uberad, a lot of the times you're going to be here. Either here, one of your soldiers, your pocket, most of the time, this is a pretty good place to be. I used to play here when I played pocket, just because you have high ground, you have all the vision, and you can drop off, not get hit, and then jump out. Pretty good place to be. And the two doors you really have to worry about are those, and then if they come bridge, it's pretty easy to spam. But, yeah, just decide what doors your demo wants to stick in, what your soldiers want to be on. The thing about this door is it's really good, because it's probably the best door to pressure a bat cap. Because most of the time what happens is scout, med, either demo or soldier, or demo and soldier, commit to the uber throughout, through this door, through that door, and they go deep a lot of times. So that leaves a scout somewhere in lobby and a soldier, usually in lower, maybe a demo. Most teams use a soldier. But... If you and your flank scout can, as soon as they pop in and they don't, like, commit, if you notice them committing too far, too far behind and just trying to get you, don't do it. But there's a really good opener where you just commit for a back cap. And then you just pull everyone back. Even if you die, you buy a lot of time for your team to get Uber. Their Uber's super split. And what ends up happening is maybe they send two people back and it turns into their team's Uber. And you saw this a lot in the Froyo match. Versus, of course, yeah, I don't know if you saw it, but a lot of times they do that, where they pull people back, they get a pick or two, and the team that's pushing out Uber isn't great. They don't get much, because they kind of have to worry about the back cap. Maybe they send one guy in the Uber back to help. So it's three people forward, and then their entire four-person combo's there. And as soon as that Uber fades, you get collapsed on. And if anything, they send another player behind. Like, I saw Bandy just a couple times, where in the chaos, send him through bridge, send him through lower, and then he gets the back cap. And it's just keep constantly making people worried. And it's really easy to get behind on this map because there's so many doors you have to deal with. And if you want to commit with having an efficient Uber, it's a bit rough. And sometimes you see teams commit through cheese. But that's besides the point. It's a really good spot. If you want to be unseen, play here. And you get pretty good spam everywhere. And if someone goes cheese, you get a really good angle. And you probably win the 1v1, especially if you have a scout playing there, right there. You set up and then... A lot of times how it works nowadays is the roamer initiates for the flank scout and trades his life for damage so your flank scout can win the 2v1 against weak players. It's at least how most time I played when I had a really, really good scout. Just set him up for frags. Get those assists. But, um, yeah, that's usually how you're going to hold against uber ads. Um, even ubers on second to last, a lot of the times... Um, yeah, a lot of times it is, because a lot of these doors, if you can jump in pretty easily, and it's indoors, so you really don't want your scout leading, because they're probably going to get messed up. So you usually want a soldier, and especially you can jump super deep. I messed it up, but like, you can jump all the way over here, you can jump through here if you really want, stuff like that, but, um, yeah. So, holding this, a lot of times you need someone looking at lower at least, a lot of times you see someone right here. Because you don't need to watch it that closely. As long as you have someone eyeing so they can't get behind or sneak up this ramp, should be fine. A lot of times Roamer's going to be working, trying to get stuff going. The one thing I hate about this last is the gun. 
this gun is so annoying. It's so hard to kill right here. Because what it, the whole point of it is, is it watches lower, it watches drop down, and it's super hard to spam. You can't really spam it from shutter. And if you go lower, you're going to get caught in the door. And there's going to be a roamer here that kills you as well. And if you go drop down, you're going to get hit by another projectile. So it's just really annoying. Really hard to break. It makes this last really boring. Really boring if teams opt to put that gun up. And a lot of times what it ends up being is you try and get through left. And you saw this a lot in the match is where you just ignore right side. You get through left and you try and get on the med. Who usually plays around there. At least in NA, most of the meds play there. In EU, I've seen a lot of them play back there. Where they do a farther back setup where there's a sniper. I don't know if it's still the case. But when I watched, their team played super far back. A gun in the back. A sniper alone on left with maybe a soldier on the shed. And you just forfeit all the ground on left to keep your med super far away with a gun right next to him. But yeah, that's, that's a EU thing. And I usually you play a gun here, you play up on the doors, and your medic plays around here. Main weaknesses to that is sniper shutter, soldier bombing on him because he's against a wall, usually. But most of the time the gun will cover. But you can also hide under a dispenser, which not the most reliable thing. I've seen too many drops through dispensers of sadness. So yeah, so a lot of times the jump is this. And the main reason is you get through really quickly where it's hard to hit the debt. It's hard to get the, the, the juggle. And you're really in through really quick where if their med's playing here, you get a good rocket and you make a lot of space for your flank scout to get in. Which, like I said, I've said that on every point. You're going to bomb in first. Your flank scout comes in second. And what you want to do is hit a good juggle on the med for 180, something like that, where your scout can try and pressure for a force. And two mans are kind of the meta on this map especially. Because it's kind of hard to push out a second. Or out of blast on this map. But that's main, the main sacks. A lot of times if they forfeit left, you just want to get in as a team, get buffs out, and then you get a really good bomb. Like, this is such a good bomb. If you get the space for it. And, yeah. If you can get that off, that is the dream. But a lot of times you won't, because there's usually a soldier, a demo, a scout here that will rush the process. But that's the main place you're going to sack. Most of the time. You can sack through lower. It's a bit awkward because it's mainly a timing thing if there's no roamer. Usually there's a roamer in this vicinity that will spot you and juggle you. Or there's the gun. Um, if you notice that they don't have a gun and they're stacking left really hard, you can always try and isolate a 2v1 on the right. Where you jump in, you either isolate the spawn door, you isolate them from the high ground, and you just try and juggle a scout or a soldier. And then your scout will come in and help. A lot of 2v1s on a lot of these sacks. But the main problem is that gun. And there's nothing really you can do to break the gun really easily. You kind of have to either bite the bullet and try and go lower or not. I think the main problem with this map is to get the gun, a lot of the times you're going to lose a player. And by the time that player spawns, another gun's going to be up where it's just a constant cycle. And you're going to have to rely on a sniper a lot of times or a two-man through the top left. Which I think is pretty boring to watch. I think most people would argue would be... I don't know, I don't like this map that much. Probably mainly because of that, and second is, or holding saw is really boring, and there's not much you can do. It's a lot of reactive, but, yeah. So, you gotta spam the gun from there, or you spam from drop, or you can do both, but usually one person's gonna die because they're off beam. But yeah, like you can do this. Most time there's gonna be a demo or a soldier here that's just gonna juggle you and mess you up, or there's a sniper right spawn. We're just gonna die instantly. Stuff like that. But that's mainly pushing last against even Ubers. So pushing last against full Uberad, or with full Uberad, is going to be most of the time your team's going to go through shutter. They can't get through lower and left, but it's like a timing kind of meta off meta thing where it's like they're going to be anticipating shutter. So we're going to mix it up and go um, a different door. But most of the time it's like that. Where the main way Ubers work nowadays on this map is usually... Your combo goes through right, they kill the gun, they pressure cap, and as soon as you have enough sp Dude, so bad. Three in a row. But a lot of times what it ends up being is your pocket's gonna be... Let me get ammo. <laughs> your pocket's gonna be going through shutter late or through lower or with your flank on left. And how it's gonna open is as soon as you get the, uh, the cap time, the uber fades, a lot of times it's gonna end up being... Bro, they're gonna end on left... Dude, I suck! Your soldier jumps through here, and as soon as he draws the eyes of either the guy here, the guy there, or something like that, your flank can commit. And your soldier can do the same jump where, once again, you get through the door, and as soon as you bust through this door, if someone's playing here... I'm not a jumper man. I haven't played a jump map in ages. Um, 
the guy's gonna either have to look at you or stare at the door and shoot your scout where he's gonna get shot in the side. And it's just a really good opener. And if anything, if no one's here, you can walk up to the door and get a better bomb. A better bomb. The, the whole point is, while your team is Ubered and they're making their way to the point, and... I'll get into it more when you're holding glass, but a lot of times the roamer's gonna have to deal with them capping. So as soon as you start baiting the cap, the roamer's gonna have to forfeit the right or your pocket, and it's gonna pull someone away from there where your flank has an easier time getting in. And if you go too early, you're gonna be a pick, and maybe they'll stack it with two or three people where they'll kill you, and then as soon as that's over, they come back to the point, and they just hold last. So you just wanna make sure you don't get picked. You wanna wait for the eyes to get drawn away from the flank and more towards the combo and stuff like that. Other things you can do if this is really not working and you want to just try and have like a together effort is you all go through the right. Only problem is potentially a sniper or a, a trap or a soldier hiding on like this. But then you can maybe double bomb off this and just commit across where your demo walks forward. Both soldiers land like either there, here, or on top of them. And it's usually just a collapse. A lot of times this map is a collapse because baiting point is good, but you can't do it without a little bit of help or distraction. And it does a really good job of pulling people out of spawn. And if they kite into spawn, what you can do is bait point, have either a demo soldier there and both soldiers like here, stuffing it and just cap. There'll be one guy probably over here that will jump the point and then the team can do it. But the whole last push dynamic, I love of this map. I hate the last, the even Ubers, but the last push is so fun. It's so interesting to watch because it's like so many things you can do. A lot of RPS. But if you don't know what RPS is, rock, paper, scissors. But that's main last holds. I've seen people do lower, but a lot of times it ends up, not anymore, but a lot of times before you see a soldier down here that takes 1v1. But it ends up being if they stay there, someone from there, the Uber comes down and gets the 2v1. And they're just a feeder, which isn't great as much anymore. But you can't get through here if you're having trouble getting through left and you get a decent bomb off. But you're on the super low ground, so do what you will with that information. And that is pushing the other teams last. So now we're going to do it from the other end. How long has this been? Oh my god, it's been 32 minutes. <laughs> this video is going to be like an hour long. I apologize. Oh my god, I went off on a tangent too much. How time flies. Um, okay, so holding last. A lot of times you're going to be on lower duty. This is a really good spot. You can't get rushed easily. Get a lot of info just be sure to be be aware a lot of times there's going to be a gun behind you and if not just be aware don't get caught out and just get info once again yeah the recording's been 30 minutes and i started when i started like actually talking about the game so yeah but a lot of times you're going to be here and if not you're going to be on top left depends once again it's one of those things where you want at least you don't have to have one project on each door at least i liked having it but if you have a gun here, you don't really need one on each door. But you want one soldier probably here. And if you want two projectiles on the right, you can. Something I kind of liked having is a demo on left. Where you have stickies here, stickies here. And you kind of play in the center. Where you're in, in the range. It's kind of like Sunshine where you're in range for any of these doors to help. You could rotate. Or you can play on top of point. Whichever. This kind of gets you closer to the fight. And you can debt on whatever door comes. And you want a soldier on the lower door just so they can't spam the gun or get a sneaky bomb through. Because if they sneak through lower and bomb on your med here, he's screwed. And usually there's going to be your combo on the top right doing something. But most time, you're on the lower. That's usually how you hold last. Um, against Uberad, like I said, you're probably going to be... I like playing here just because you can spot where their combo is actually going. And it's really low risk. Though at worst, you take 30 damage rockets or scatter spam. And I'd take that trade for damage. Or info, easily, every time. But, like, you, you can see where they're going. You can get a call. And if no one's committing here, you can always peek in deep, get spam on the flank. You can either commit on the flank, which I don't usually like doing, because that kind of forfeits the point for a potential flank play that may not work. But, yeah. And if that happens of anything, then you can just give up right, because no one's coming here. But just be aware, people may hide in cheese, so it's harder to spot them. So don't take it. 100% just let people know that you're giving up right so someone can maybe rotate or at least pay attention to it like a scout But yeah, usually most of the time this point's gonna be you're gonna have to have one soldier be like the contact For the point because the scout usually baits this You need to be able to bomb it and get them off of it And you may you'll probably die most of the time because it's kind of hard to land here and not die But if you can you can live maybe jump up here 
And maybe play resub if you really want. But resub on this map's not great to just keep going in and out of compared to like what's a good map for it? I'm trying to think. Metalworks? Maybe not Metalworks, but like Sunshine maybe. I can't think of it on the top of my head, but process maybe. There's some maps that are good with it. But that's usually how you're gonna hold last a lot of times. This is your area. Maybe not. If you want to go lower, go lower. If you want to do some cheese spot. Like on top of the pipe, I don't know. On top of the spool. Stuff like that. Do you? And pushing out last, you want to watch lower. I honestly like playing here more often than all the way in lower. The only problem is if someone does like a bomb. It's a bit awkward. But if they commit super fast behind, it's harder to stop. But usually you'll have some help. And you can try and rush back. But the thing that this gives you is it, it lets you have good position on lower and if they come upper lobby you can help your scout or whoever else is in here and get a 2v1 a 2v2 or a 3v2 something like that and you still get info on lower and then eventually if it starts getting clear make sure someone's clearing cheese clear the common spots like here watch for stickies clear under stuff like that those are like two real spots just make sure you don't get back out from above because then you look like an idiot and no one wants that right but that's mainly what you do. You're going to hold lower. And if you're not holding, your demo is. And then you're going to be holding cheese. And then spots to clear here. The box, behind the box, on the pipe. It's just really awkward to walk through. You don't usually want to walk through this door. Because you're most likely going to die. Because this is just... This door getting right here is... They could be anywhere. <laughs> and you're just at low ground for the pipe. And if they're on the right, then you're usually not looking there first. And it's awkward to go... Yeah. That's usually how you push out. Um... So yeah, pushing out with Uber Ad, that's what you do. Holding second with Uber Disad, a lot of times you're going to be the one on the pipe. I usually like playing here. I think I told Trip to play here when I used to demo review him. So a lot of times what you're going to do is... So the good thing about this is, as you'll notice a lot of the maps, I like getting a lot of info. Because when I played, I calmed a lot. If people have played with me, they know. I like to give info a lot. So what you get is you get lower, you get saw. And if anything, you can drop down and get more saw info. Or you can get lower info, and you get a decent bomb onto lower if you really want. Or if you want, if you know they're coming saw, you can rotate forward and get a good bomb here and try and sink on the med or something. But it's like a really good... I don't know, I, I always compare to other things like sports or other esports, but it's triple threat. You know, triple threat is where you can drive, shoot, pass, stuff like that, where you can do so many things. It's the, it's the place that gives you the most options. It's so like the best neutral position. So this is probably the best neutral position for a roamer, at least, or a pocket, whichever. And yeah, you just get a spot on everything. You can commit anywhere. You can get a buff. Your med can buff you from there if they you if they jump, I think. I don't remember. But you can get a buff up here. And it's just a really good spot overall. So yeah, you can, like I said, on the other end, you can push saw, try and get behind, or you commit on lower, or you just want someone watching saw so they don't get a free sack. Just communicate, have one of your soldiers or one of your scouts eye it so they don't get a free bomb through saw. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. But, um, yeah. You want one guy here. That's usually it. Um, if they're pushing with Uber, you can be in the same spot. Maybe you want to try and cheese it a little bit. Maybe play a bit farther forward. If they're coming saw and someone in cheese gets a call, sink. Try and get a pick there. If they're coming lower, main thing you want to do is make sure to force them before they get across point. Because once they get there, it's a bit rough. Because then they're super close. And if they do get forced, it's pretty good for them because they can just Uber into you. But the you kind of got to... Either you bomb on them before they get through the door or you don't. Because once they get through the door and into the grass, their med can kite all the way over here. And there's so much room to surf. But if you get an early spot with this scout, like... The scout can play here. This is a really good spot. Just because... You don't really get caught, maybe from cheese, but you can always play like right here, where you get all the info. And if they see they start, they start coming lower, then you can be like, all right, let's bomb in like three seconds. And you bomb, you sink rockets on the store with the other soldier, whoever goes here just insta-gibs, and they their, their push gets messed up. But potentially, you could also sack two soldiers, and it's very bad. So, you know, it's a bit risky. But... Next part is pushing into mid with Uberad. I think this is actually wrapping it up. Yeah, pushing mid with Uberad is going to be a lot of the times wherever comma goes, you're going to mirror. Um, once again, this map is a lot of potential wraps. 
or flank pushes. So just be aware. Play it safe. If um, your team goes saw, play lower. You can play here. You're not going to get as much info. Maybe your flank scout plays on this side, and you play on that side. So you get a spot on cheese and lower. Only worry is you usually want your... If your combo's going saw, you want your pocket probably here. And if anything, you can sacrifice having... I did this a lot where... Either your scout goes saw with your combo or your roamer goes saw with your combo and you just leave your lone flank player in a really good spotting position. Either there or on the other side where they get info and as soon as they call if a flank's pushing, your guy from window can drop down and help. And they're in a very good spot because they're probably going to have a better buff. They're going to... Yeah, they're going to have high ground and stuff like that. So that's usually a really good spot to be. Stuff like that. And if they go lower, same thing saw. Saw's a bit scarier because it's hard to get out just because window's a bad door. And if you're here, you don't have the high ground. But a lot of times I played here if your team's pushing lower. And usually you don't want your... I don't know, it's awkward for a scout to be in here. So sometimes you want your scout maybe with your combo or in this door. So then once you see they're pushing, you either decide, hey, let's, we have better health, let's take the 2v2. Or you decide, let's wait... And, like, you can always jump back here and get a better spot. The only worry is if they just, like, bait and switch. They push saw, back up, fall into your combo, mess them up. But it's kind of like, you gotta play it passive. You can't, you can't get picked. Because if you're picked, everything's gonna fall apart for your combo. And you're kind of an anchor on this map. This is at least how I played it a lot of times, where I was just big anchor. But, yeah, I think that's... I guess the last thing is, I guess, pushing mid... A lot of times, you're going to be the last guy in, but potentially, you'll be the first one in where you jump through the main saw door and try and draw eyes. And once someone bombs you, you bomb again, either somewhere else. But just make sure there's a couple trap spots, like it can be above there, it can be on the slope, it can be rock, it can be on this wall, it can be on the crate, it can be on the shed. You'll learn more as you play. They be there, it can be in this wood plank, it can be on cheese. Oh my god. I forgot I said fuck it. <laughs> Okay, you can be on, be on cheese there, be on cheese there, in the in the bucket. No one uses the bucket. It could be on. There's so many places it can be. You'll learn them the more you play. But yeah, I think that's it. I don't think I forgot any spots. I'll wait for like a minute for questions. But it's been 42 minutes of a recording, and this is going to be very long. Standard sacks and counter sacks. I think I went over the standard sacks, but usually, like I said, it's going to be through saw. I don't usually like counter sacking just because it kind of takes away a potential for your combo to do something. And, it, and counter sacks usually have to be like instant. So you're going to instantly take a little bit of like a low-ish percentage. It depends on the situation. But a lot of times I'd rather pressure and like get a better sack off a little bit later. Or get a, a trade or get someone behind and try and work off of that. And work more picks, try get another pick, stuff like that. But I used to love counter sacks. It's just, that was my bread and butter. But off of last counter sacks, you can do from lower. You can try and get through cheese and then, like, bomb. That's pretty good. Lower's not great just because usually, someone's usually looking at it. But if you pressure upper and just instantly bomb, make sure not to hit your head because I think I saw Trip jump, hit his head on this map, and it was very sad. But, yeah, you can jump through lower. Jumping through the these doors is usually rough because people are usually on top. Demo's usually on top of this door and that door. Usually a scout watching lower. So kitchen's probably the easiest way to get in, but it just takes a while and is very uh, telegraphed. So you just got to pick your poison. If you want to, you could probably jump out like that maybe or a bit farther back. And surf off of the ramp. Try and get something through there. But yeah, that's usually the counter sack. I went over the sacks. Counter sacking back in the mid. I'd probably say... A decent way to do it is kitchen, where you can pressure kitchen and it pull people over, or you just jump through it and go behind because it's really hard to deal with. And then as soon as they recommit to saw, you can jump back in and like get on the med wherever he is. And just like the bait and switch is really good because if they overcommit to you, then saw is open for your combo. And that's usually like what I like to do more than just sacking is just going behind. And it opens up a lot, because either you go behind, they overextend for you, your combo gets in, they send one guy back, and then your flank scout can get in and help, or they don't commit to you at all, and then you recommit and get a really good bomb off of the high ground. So, 
that's usually the counter sacks. And I went over the sacks, so I think that's it. Um, and this is the questions I'm probably going to end because my throat is killing me. Because I went on a rant too much on Golden Cap. And it was kind of like the cast, I was talking a lot. But, yeah. Voice isn't as bad as it was then. It's definitely. But I think that's it. Um, unless there's anything else, I'm going to end the recording. And I'll upload this. Last time, I uh, I forgot to uh, uh, unlist it, so I kind of released it on Wednesday, even though I recorded it on Monday. So I'm sorry if anyone cut, lost their match on Viaduct and I didn't have uh, the map review. So, uh, <laughs> apologies. But I completely forgot to make it public. But that is all. I'll probably not do this next week unless people really want to see metal. Wait, that's a map I missed, but metal's pretty one-dimensional. I don't like metal as well. It's another map that's kind of boring. These are probably like my two least favorite five CPs. No metal. Alright, yeah, I'm in any.